Alright, thanks for joining me for this yin series. The important with yin is that you hold the poses for four to five minutes. So I recommend uh, setting a timer. I'm going to show you how to get into each position. Set a timer for four to five minutes. The last minute or two are going to get a little uncomfortable to hold it. Work on your breathing. Slow down your breath. Try to breathe into the spaces that feel really tight or constricted. And with time you'll start to really love this practice. In yin yoga, the breath is a very important part of the practice. So as you breathe, think about the breath starting from the belly, expand the belly, then expand the chest, and last, expand the upper back. And as you exhale, do it in reverse. First you let the breath go through the back, then through the chest, and then through the belly. And try to bring the belly into the spine at the last part of the exhale. Try to make your inhale and your exhale match each other. We're looking for about a five to seven second inhale and a five to second, seven second exhale. All the positions we're gonna hold should be relaxing, you should feel supported. So use more blankets, use more props if you need to so that you feel like you're able to relax into the pose and that you're not fighting it. Also, a big part of the meditative aspect of yin is letting your mind relax. So if you find yourself naturally thinking about what you have to do later today or worries that you have, it's okay, acknowledge them, but then let them go. Try to stay in the moment so that you can let yourself relax and rejuvenate. Okay, we're going to start off with a chest opener. If you take your blanket and roll it up and then place it on your mat, and you're going to lay with your spine right here on this blanket with the top part of your shoulder blades right at the top of your blanket and the lower part of your blanket down by your tailbone. And then from here, you're going to open the arms out nice and wide, extend the legs out. If that's not enough of a stretch, you can use a block and you're going to place the top of the block right above your bra strap. Here. And then you can open your arms out to the side arms out to the side. The next pose we're going to do a supported child's pose. You're going to fold your blanket back up and we're going to take the two blocks at the top of your mat lengthwise and then you're going to cover your blocks with your blankets. From here you're going to take your feet together but knees nice and wide and then you're going to lay across your block and blanket just like this. and blanket like this we're gonna pivot it off the mat I like to do the straddle sitting on a mat so your heels are supported and then you're going to lay forward in your straddle if this seems way too intense you need more support you can stack your blocks this way and then cover the blanket and then rest your forehead on your arms Okay, from here we're going to do a supported butterfly. So you're going to place your feet together, knees out nice and wide, and place a block underneath each leg. And then just slowly lower yourself down onto the ground. So you should feel a nice opening in the hips. If 
this feels like it's too supported, you can always go to blankets lower and just hold here. supported pigeon, a very supported pigeon. So you're going to take a block with your blanket folded at the top of your mat and then you're going to use another block under your hip. I'm going to place this one right here. You're going to bring that front leg parallel to the front of your mat and make sure this, make sure the block is right underneath your hip. The back leg can be straight but it doesn't have to be for right now and then you're just going to walk your arms out and lay down on your blanket. This, is, this stretch is going to be a little more intense. It's going to be a supported hero's pose. You're going to take both blocks lengthwise at the top of your mat, cover them with your blanket. From here, you're going to bend one foot back by your hip. And if your other, if your hips aren't both on the ground, you might need another blanket underneath the hip with this leg that's straight to keep both hips down. And from here, you're going to walk yourself back onto your blanket working on opening up the hip flexor and the quadriceps here. supported twist. Leave your block and blanket how you had them for your supported hero and then make it so your knees are perpendicular to your block and from here you're going to turn and face your blanket and walk your hands out to do a little twist. You can start facing the same direction or if you want a little bit more of a twist you can take your gaze the opposite direction. Depending on your flexibility and your hamstrings, you may need to put your blocks all the way up on their tallest side with a blanket on top folded. And from here, you're just going to fold forward. You can rest your forehead on your arms. If that gets easy, then you can go to a lower position. For your, final, for your final pose, Shavasana, we're going to do corpse pose. You're going to take your blocks side by side, and you're going to fold your blanket over your blocks this way. This way your legs are supported, your knees are going to be bent over the blanket. It'll help your lower back feel nice and comfortable on the ground, arms relaxed out by your sides. Let your feet flop open a little bit, and then just melt into corpse pose. Thank you.